Greetings, ladies, gentlemen, and others. I am the Guardian, and we apologize for our absence last week, for our friend Tristan has beaten his ailment. Yes, I have, and it feels good to actually speak and properly breathe again. Yes. And with us, of course, is Aisara Iwasaki. And before we get yes. started on the topic, you are moving. Yes, I move tomorrow. At the time of this recording, at least. I move Saturday. Congrats, hon. I bet you're happy about that. Not really. Well, to an extent, I should say. The process is the most stressful thing that she has yeah. dealt with this year so far. Exactly. I am, I'm just sorry I, I wasn't able to help. You can help tomorrow if you have if you have time. After class, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What time? Would, I'm not exactly sure what time that would be, but what time are uh, we... What time are we planning on moving? I have no idea. I, I I'm... If, I'll tell if, him and let... You know. If things go according to plan, I imagine you're going to start as as late as ten, probably, and then spend the whole day moving in the boxes to the new place. Yeah. So if you can come over and help tomorrow, I don't see a problem. If that is not going to be the case, then I will be extremely shocked and appalled. Yeah. I think you expect it's all day chemistry. Well, no, not you, but the moving. Oh yeah. But, but we are here because, regardless of what anyone else thinks, we care about the 26th anniversary of Power Rangers. Yes, yes we do. So shut up, Entertainment Freak. This is what we were going to be discussing last week before our friend was ailed by that, which is probably a throat bug. It was. Iridaro was just experimenting with poison-related powers. Whoa. Poison. Oh, ha, 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 ha. So, now we shall start things off by demonstrating that we're fans of Power Rangers. I'm not sure if you could figure that out from some of the other videos on the channel. Yeah, I, it took a while for me to figure that out. I'm actually being truthful because we've pretty much only done one Sarcasm solid video. Money. About two? Remember P Power Rangers 2017? Oh right, yeah. As well as this, as well as the meet and greets out on the conventions with of on Power Ranger alumni. As well as the multiple videos we've had of wearing that shirt. Uh, your pickups, um, the pickup videos when you got the power blaster. Oh yeah. And or the red. And <coughs> the red ranger helmet, yeah. Uh, dragon dagger, Saba. Yeah. Which I still need to get a functioning Saba. Your Funko Pop that you won in that, that trivia contest. I don't think we did a video for that one. Oh, weird. Yeah, it was just a small Chesapeake library convention, I don't think. But still, you won the trivia contest. You won by one point exactly. Yeah, but you still got to take a, take a pic of, of a Funko Pop yourself. Yeah, that was awesome. So... I got Blackfire. Nice. So, um... Yeah, in case you couldn't have guessed, we're fans of the franchise uh, up until Beast Morphers because I've only seen three episodes and I am not thoroughly impressed, nor have I had the time to resume watching Beast Morphers. I am told that the second half of the series is supposed to be coming out soon, if not already been released. I think it's tomorrow. Maybe. But as of right now, I am not that impressed by Beast Morphers, but we'll get to that. For now, let's rewind the clock <coughs> back to 1993. I was not even a fetus yet. I wasn't either. I was still very fresh. Oh, uh, yeah, because you were 92. Old man Tristan. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> So, the original Power Ranger series was back in 1993, but ignoring that from 1993 to now, when was... Pr you said that... I sorry, you said your first introduction was seeing random ep episodes of it on, like, ABC Kids or something. It was... Uh, yeah, it was, like, Saturday Morning Cartoons original Power Rangers. At yeah. first... Yeah, for the longest Don't me for this. for the longest time, you didn't think it was the original. For the long, yeah. You didn't know which one it was. Exactly, and I finally figured out years later that it was the original. I remember but, that conversation explicitly. Like, like, I, SPD, me. like I was saying, don't me for this. I didn't like it at first. Yeah, I didn't Winter. like Power Rangers. <laughs> I didn't like Power Rangers at first. That's because I just figured 
in, you know, I don't want to say gender stereotypes, but it might as well have been back then, because I thought it was just a boy thing, and I was not interested at all. That's why I didn't like superheroes, that's why I didn't like any of that. I got over that years later. You were a very naive child. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Because I sat down one morning, I got up extra early to watch uh, my TV show. before your mother stole the yeah. remote from you. And I sat down and I was like, okay, Power Rangers is on, whatever, you know, I'll sit here and watch it. I got hooked. Instantly. I still remember that discussion we had when we were trying to help you remember what it was. You were literally <laughs> describing... Note for note, what they looked like. There's like there's they had like uh, animal masks, and there was like a white diamond on their chest, and we kept saying it was the original Mighty Morphin, but you said no, nah, that's not it. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't remember. My memory sucks. It's all right. You're we still a, love you. You're a part of us now. What about you, Professor? I watched ever since the very beginning. Like uh, yeah, you. Uh, I I don't think the footage is lost because that first viewing of the first movie. Uh, flagged and taken down. Of course. But you um, you said you watched it how many times in theaters? Oh, mom and I have lost count. That would be the, like movie, like just what I would go see every single Saturday when uh, it was still in theaters. <laughs> so at least five. That's cool. At least five. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, what about the show itself? You said you started from the beginning. I've watched every single season when I was growing up. Even at a point where Mom Fowl was um, like Power Rangers 2 final for me, I still snuck and watched it. <laughs> nice. And I still, in my fact, I still actually have some of my old toys from way back then, because... Yeah, so do I. Because I actually, because I used to collect the Zords. Because I had the Turbo Rescue Zord, I had um, the Space Carrier, I... Astro Megazord? Yeah, I, I, even, I even had Astro Delta. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I had um, White Falcon Zord from the movie. Ruin a lot of the stuff ruined by the roaches. Uh, and like you know, Carol's Child. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what else I had. I had Lost Galaxy Zord. I had a Lightspeed on um, Lightspeed Rescue Zord. Nice. And as well as uh, the Turbo Rescue Zord. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So I've been around the block. I see that. Plus, you've been around the Japanese block for Super Sentai. Yep. Been following that in your spare time, I guess. When I can get... Yeah, when I do have spare time, or at least I actually feel like I'm not, like, you know, like, like bear, um, bearing myself down with it. Because I have marathoned all of Gokaiger in one sitting before. And that was it. over 19 hours and 50, and 50 minutes of footage. Let's, uh, let's get back to, uh... Uh, Super Sentai as we proceed down the line Uh, on my end of things I liked Power Rangers but I didn't know I liked it I think my first I think my very first real influence from Power Rangers might have been Jet X when they did Power Rangers Generations yeah yeah that was fun yeah I remember specifically there was um, uh, the reinforcements from the future two-parter of Wild Force and then, and like, they show two episodes. They showed those two episodes, and then the next time on Power Rangers Wild Force. Yeah. I saw the teaser for Forever Red, <coughs> and when I, the next day when I went to watch Power Rangers Generations, it was a completely different Power Rangers series. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> As for the toys, I, did, I, I think I might have gotten those before I actually watched some of the show. Or no, I actually had the one Best of the Power Rangers DVD that I played constantly, which had the White Light two-parter, Countdown to Destruction two-parter, To the Tenth Power, Trakina's Revenge Part 1 and 2, and Forever Red. I I probably played that disc about as many times as Lena played the Tigger movie before the VCR Aider tape. Ooh, that's quite a bit. Yeah, that was uh, years ago. Yeah, but I think the one of the very first, like, Power Ranger toys I had, and I'm ashamed because I was a dumb kid and I didn't know what I had at the time, but it was ori- the, those original, it was the six-pack, too, of the Power Rangers Time Force. It had red, green, blue, pink, yellow, 
and the Quantum Ranger, plus all the weapons that they had, which combined into their time cannon. Ooh. And I lost them through time. I still had West, but I lost his left leg, so... Trip uh, made a donation. Okay, then. So somewhere in my collection, I have a Red Ranger with a left green leg. All right, then. But after that when I started to pay more attention to it, it was around the Disney era with Ninja Storm. That's where I started taking better care and when the toys actually started getting better and were made of better material. So I had, uh, including the Solaris Knight, everyone from Power Rangers Mystic Force until someone stole my Yellow Ranger. I think it was my Yellow Ranger, which... Looking back on it now, Chip is probably my favorite of the Yellow Rangers. But after that, got Jungle Fury. I have one RPM Ranger. I think it's Dylan, the Black Ranger. And after that, I just wasn't really collecting those as much. Just started collecting the Morphers, which got the original Dino Buckler, both versions, the the silver and the gold version. I now have the Xeonizer. I've got the SPD Morpher, the Mystic Force Morpher, yeah. like two of the Mystic Force Morphers, the regular one, and the Battleizer. Mm-hmm. And I am, and I got the Quantum Morpher too. That's right, you did. And I am looking as hard as I can <coughs> to find some of those other Power Ranger Morphers. I'm holding my tongue, I'm biding my time so that hopefully I won't have to buy the Go Cut, the uh, Super Mega Force Morpher. Let's get the Gokaiju one instead. It's basically the same thing. Oh. Yes, more pricey. It's pricey here. Oh. Yeah, seriously. Th- the rates that Power Ranger Morphers go for now, I found... Uh, Expensive. Yeah, I found the Ninja Thunder Morphers on eBay for $60. That's the cheapest I found them. And they were used. Yeah. Expensive. Yeah, so let's... Let's go through the series. We have the Mighty Morphin Era, which is the classic original, although at this point may be a bit overrated, considering you, how many you, people worship it. And you can't see them, but we're both wearing Power Rangers shirts. That's right. I and I are wearing uh, Seasons 1 and 2 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He gave me this one. Yeah, I was getting rid of some clothes. That was a large, and I can't fit into that without showing off my, my belly button. And it fit me. Professor, unfortunately, doesn't have a Power Ranger shirt yet. But it's okay. We'll get you one. Yeah, on the line, I'll definitely get something. Most likely a costume shirt, most, more, than, more than definitely. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I'm currently working on getting a Power Ranger hoodie, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Let me see. After Mighty Morphin, we leap into the very short-lived and disappointing Alien Ranger saga. Yeah. Season 3.5. Yeah, what's that called? Kaku Ranger? Yep. Ninja Sentai Kaku Ranger, or Ninja Team Squadron Hidden Ranger. I'm going to believe that that is infinitely better than Alien Rangers. The theme song alone is infinitely better. Oh, I believe so. Isn't Alien Rangers just a repeat of the first one with the different... Yeah, with the the word alien replacing... Power. Yeah. Go, go, Alien Rangers! With Kaku Ranger... It's old field Japan um, Japanese old field Japan Japanese music um, music instruments, even with the whole stick on the mm-hmm. just like that. Nice. Although I will say this, I'm pretty sure they would probably I'm not sure who ripped off who. Kaku Ranger ripped off Studio Ghibli, or Studio Ghibli ripped off um, Kaku Ranger. Mm-hmm. You want to know how you travel through the dimensions? How? A cat themed bus. Oh. Uh. That's funny. Oh, and also not a mission of fact they were ninjas, but their um their special power was pop culture references. Dated nowadays. All right then. Not exactly. They're more like they actually because sometimes they actually had the sound effects, like you know, like when they hit with something. Oh. Yeah. So the pop culture ninja. That's funny. Okay. Moving on to that, we have Zio. <coughs> power Rangers. I love the song. Zio. Yeah. Theme song is great. Hell I gotta yeah. gotta rewatch Zio because it's. I can't remember if I like it better than the original Power Rangers though. All right, but I, 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 but here's an important question I have to ask you guys. Yes. 
Mighty Morphin Command Center or Zeo Command Center? Mighty Morphin Command Center, easily. Really? You can't beat those big pillars of glowiness and Zordon's actually in a tube as opposed to a wall. Sounds like the tube was in the wall, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Not to mention how it, how it looked in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. It looked way better there. It looked fantastic. My thing is, because as much as I love the Mighty Morphin one, I also love the Zeo Turbo one because you can actually see where you're working. That's true. Yeah, but... The, 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 big, the best happy medium is the one from the movie. Yeah. Yeah, but it's an original. It's a, it's a classic thing. It's, a, classic. it's hard to not look, not like a classic <coughs> one. But uh, uh, we got a bit of things with Zio. Uh, Billy was the last of the original Rangers to stick around until the end, until his departure was uh, haphazardly handled yeah. due to events offset. And uh, we got the return of a former ranger, Jason, as the gold ranger. Yeah, yeah. Plus the idea of Trey of Triforia was really interesting. Yes, actually. And, of course, the stuff going on with Lord Zed and Rita, which we didn't even talk about them in the original Power Rangers. Zed might be one of my favorite Power Ranger villains until the adults complained and made him more child-friendly. Yeah, because he was a beast. Yeah, he was. It was perfect. Why did they complain? Because they have <coughs> basically he is a muscular red man with silver chrome around his body that acts like a skeleton, and a silver visor and like a sort of mask around him. Yeah. And he you and he has a giant snake that transforms into his staff. Mm-hmm. Plus, he has a raspy voice that sends terror into your heart. It was back in the nineties. People were very overly sensitive even then. Not as much as they were now, but way more. Not to mention the atmosphere that was added to him made it somewhat more terrifying. Not terrifying in a bad way, but like in a good way. Like you want to see the Rangers fight this guy. Yeah, it was easily one of the most violent and most terrifying villains in, in, um, in Power Rangers history. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fact, I'm pretty sure it was because of the complaints of why you never really get to see um, the Rangers actually use their weapons anymore. Probably. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, that's a good point. Just like in the second Ninja Turtle movie, how like, in the first one you see them use their weapons, in the second uh-huh. one they never even unsheathed them. Unfortunately, in the second Ninja Turtles movie, they then use household appliances such as yo-yos to beat up bad guys. So congrats, parents. Your complaining has just taught your kids how to use household items to defend themselves. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, the yo-yo was originally built as a weapon. This is true. Yeah. But still, I, yeah. It, it, yeah. You know how they, <coughs> you know how they dumbed down Lord Zed? What they do? They had a Mary Rita. Yeah. I thought that was just jokes you made. No, that that actually happened. Yeah, and um, no one. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm definitely going to take this route. Go ahead. All right. Basically, Zen never even actually really fell in love. Rita um drugged him with a love him. potion. Yeah, Rita drugged him. You mentioned that. It was yeah. basically rape. Wow. Yeah, it was basically men- mental manipulation. Yeah, mental yet manipulation. They still, like, yet they still kept that in. They kept that in the series. No, no, no. I'm talking about. The canon? No, how you mentioned the whole thing with Damien. With Damien Wayne. They still oh, yeah. Kept the, they still kept that in, yet... That was years later, though. Yeah, and it was a direct-to-DVD <laughs> movie based off a comic book. Also, just shows the purpose of like, the double standards of society. Yeah, so... Can bit hypocritical, just, yes. Can you just imagine Zed did that, the Rita, and how pissed off people have been? Yeah. yeah. It's fine for a woman to do it, but suddenly if a man does it, it's completely against well, the law. Well, that's the whole, didn't Felicia do it to, not, Fel- not Felicia, it is Felicia. Talia? That's her name? No, Talia. My bad. Talia, Talia did it to Batman, and suddenly it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, but didn't... If Batman were to do it to Catwoman, then people would throw a hissy fit. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, which we'll get back to that later when we get to Operation Overdrive, but they actually had a kid. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. From from Lord Zed and Rita plus Rito Revolto. He was hilarious. Who was a Cocker Ranger enemy, actually. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so he's a uh, army themed skeleton that reeks like old tomato fungus. Ew. And 
they upgrade, well, some people say upgraded uh, them to the Machine Empire, which is like a giant legion of mechanical menaces that resorts to the same plot of sending one monster down one at a time. Pretty okay. much. And they're defeated by the Zeo Rangers by growing big themselves. Okay. They were truly defeated by the Zeo Rangers. You were defeated by Rita and Zed mailing them a bomb. All right, then. Oh, yeah. That, that's true, too. So they were pretty much nuked by Rita and Zed. Okay, then. Yeah. A family show. Oh, don't forget about, uh, about Emperor Voltal. Master Vile? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Master Vile. <coughs> oh, please don't make me mention the metallic armor. Oh, you mean the sparkly armor? It's freaking glitter! <laughs> Master Vile and metallic armor. One of the best three parts of season three. My ass. You mentioned I'm that. I'm pretty sure I think he was the actual... Yeah, yeah. He was a legit He was a legit final end bad guy for Cocker Ranger. And yet they used Hydro Hog. We keep getting off topic. Yes, no, we no, we're saying we're not getting off topic. We're staying on topic. Okay. We're staying on topic. We're just going back and we're forth tangenting. between the timeline. Yeah, line. tangenting. Yeah, because okay. uh, so you know I'm just gonna, I'm sorry. I just want to throw this out there because you Go know what the, the the final battle was in Cosmic Ranger. What? It was Master Vile, and he managed to actually kidnap and capture four out of five Rangers. Okay. okay. Black, yellow, blue, and white. All right. As well as his own dark Kaku Rangers, which is basically a whole... Wait a minute. Is that what that blue goblin creature was that was attacking Ninjor? Was that a part of that? I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while since I saw, but the final battle, because you know basically how they have Charlie's Angels? Yeah. yeah. Master Vile in the Japanese version basically had a, a team of all-female Sakura flower themed kunoi, um, kunoichi. Really? Uh, against um, Finum. There, were, there was um, violet, red, blue, pink, and purple. All right, then. And it was all the Sasuke, the red Kaka Ranger, to save them all and then initiate a final battle. Yeah, his the, name is Sasuke. Within Get the dark space. It. She has a problem with the name Sasuke. There's Sasuke, um, Suruhime, no, I don't. Sa- um, Seizo, Saizo, and Black Ranger Jiraiya. All right. Who had the power of toads. That's funny. Yeah. That is funny. Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Literally. Yeah. Okay, let's agree that Kaku Ranger's better than Alien Ranger's, but let's get back from... I know, I just... It was awesome. It was just the awesome setup I had, um... Because they were all chained down to the ground. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, we moved from Zeo, which was a, arguably a step up in quality, with a step down into Turbo, which is not nearly as bad as people say it is. No, but when you really think about where it came from, I get where the problem was, honestly. Yeah. Is it because of the whole Car Ranger thing? It, it, Car Ranger was a parody of Super Sentai. It was super self-aware of a, of a goofiness. Okay. Yeah. They did a whole Sailor Moon thing with it. They did? <laughs> yeah, there was a White Ranger. We had a fan belt. She had a Heishin wand, just like Sailor Moon. And oh, her that's out, funny. And her uniform was basically like a Sailor Scout on Fuku. That's funny. Uh, that's amusing. It was just basically a white dress. That was it. But yeah. Oh, so more serenity. The then. Big, I think the biggest. <clears throat> okay. I think the biggest <coughs> issue people had was that it re- they replaced the cast because uh, Tommy, uh, Tanya, Adam, and uh, uh, Catherine. Cat- yeah, Catherine. They were replaced by uh, Ashley, Carlos. Uh, Cassie. TJ, Cassie and TJ. Yeah. And Justin stuck around. That's another thing. I think they were pissed because Justin was made the new Blue Ranger in the movie. I think it probably was because of the whole child acting thing, but I didn't see a problem with Justin. Justin was arguably one of the better parts of Turbo. Justin was actually cool. He was smart for a kid. He was smart. You see, when something mysterious goes wrong, like if people start disappearing or whatnot, yeah. he instantly realizes it's Diva Talks and goes to grab the stuff to morph. Yeah. That's what he does. He is a smart kid. They didn't paint him that well in the movie, though. They didn't? No. They did him as, like, the stereotypical, cool, I'm a Power Ranger, we're going to do awesome stuff like oh, this. Okay. That's because they want, like, you know, like, you know, have, like, a, something for kids can actually latch onto and actually, like, feel like they're par- actually part of it because there weren't any actual kid Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Because they, cause even though at the time, like, kids always looked up the teenagers because they thought they were the epitome of cool. Mm-hmm. Ironically enough, though, there was uh, in uh, Die Ranger, yeah. the White Ranger was actually a kid. He was nine years old. Die Ranger? Yeah. Uh, no, season two of Power Rangers. It's ah. uh, the White Ranger. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, but uh, back to Turbo. Another issue people had was that Diva Talks was a complete joke. Plus, Elgar was annoying. Well, Elgar was meant to be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Elgar was uh, annoying. Wasn't Elgar was the blue guy that was, uh, that was on the crew? Um, the one that was, like, was in, a, in a giant bubble? I don't know. Uh, but you know who I'm talking about, right? We're just going to call him Fred. All right. Fun fact. Fred's the main bad guy. Yeah, in and, Car and Car Ranger. Oh, he, looked, he looked more intimidating. Okay. Let's well, come on. Why, he they really dunk him can. Down when they got when they when they brought it here, did they dunk him down too? He's a he's just a minion in there. Boy. I'm just gonna say this. Can we really complain about Diva Sox? Hint, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Perv. I'm sure I'm the perv, but yeah, she's the one in the skin tight outfit. That was just she was basically just popping out of in the movie. Yeah, but at least I don't point it out. Besides, I don't think she's all that in. Attractive. I like Ashley more than I like Diva Talks. I can't not. Precisely. I'm just saying. I was just saying. All right, then. Yeah. Moving Pl- on, plus, gentlemen. There was plus the uh, unexplored story with the Phantom Ranger. Oh, the RV Master? Yes. Yeah, Phantom Ranger and Blue Centurion. <clears throat> Signal Man? Yeah, supposed to be uh, a ranger from the future, and Phantom Ranger was supposed to be Zordon's son or something. We'll never find out. No, we Not unless they do something with the comics, but other than that, we'll never find out. Have they done anything with the comics thus far? So far, no. Which does not surprise me, to be honest. Well, they just got into season two, to be, to be fair. So maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I was going to say this. Another thing people had with Turbo, there was nothing wrong to Zeo Powers. Yeah. If I, if I may? Um, sure, go ahead. And back me up on this. They sort of wrote themselves into a corner with Zeo because they established that the Zeo powers are supposed to get stronger with time. At this. Yeah. It's, it's like Sans. After each battle, they grow stronger. Yeah. I thought it was like, you know, when they're so closer, closer to death, so um, like the mansion bring back, what essentially. They, so basically what they, you're telling me what they did was they established this plot point and completely forgot about it later? Yes. I'm until the comics, at least. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the twin, yeah, and I guess the 20th anniversary special, on um, the 25th anniversary special, uh, the Ninja Steel one? No, there wasn't a Zeo Ranger in there. Yes, there was. Remember? Master Morpher? Oh, yeah, Tommy. Tom. Yeah, that's that's the only instance we see another Zeo Ranger. Wait, that was that when he changed into the different Rangers throughout yep. time? You guys showed me that. Yeah. Because, um... Yeah, basically they wrote in a Zenkai boost that just that just gradually gets stronger with time. Okay. That was the major <coughs> issue they had with Turbo. There was no need to replace those powers. All right, okay. we gotta review the Turbo movie now. Yeah, we do. Because yeah. I just thought of, of a very important, sp- stupid plot point. You mean the fact that there was probably a deleted scene where Divatox somehow destroyed the Zeo powers and they inevitably needed the Turbo powers to defeat her later on? Because that was supposed to be in the movie. That would've been stupid. Yeah. No. The thing is, Rocky flew out of the ring and hurt himself, and that's why he wasn't able to become a Blue Ranger. Yeah, how do you do a jump kick and then fly over the ring? That's not as Backwards. Hard. Backwards. That's harder than it seems. Also, plus, plus the rings, these ropes on the rings, they go up to about here, around your neck. Well, with eye. Neck or chest left. It's harder to jump over that backwards. I was going to say this. Don't you think the Zeo powers will have actually in, in um actually like you know naturally protected him and actually actually save him from that? You'd think, wouldn't yeah. you? Also, if they if all the Zeo Rangers who inevitably became the Turbo Rangers um left, yeah, don't you think they still will have also been you know you know still been um actual Power Rangers because they still have their Zeo crystals? Yeah. So, uh... And we'll get to another theory relating to the Zeo powers when we get to, <coughs> to uh, Dino Thunder. Yeah. But for now, let's fly higher than ever before from from Turbo to Power Rangers. In, in space. space. <laughs> Rangers in, in space. space! Help me! I can see the Alpha doing that, saying that, too. Hi, 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 hi! Help me! I love in space. It was a great. It was it was a great uh, series. It had a great villain, some good action. The only hiccup I can see is that episode where they teamed up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
I like that episode. Yeah, but it's from Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. I know. Honestly, I didn't mind that show too much. I actually kind of liked it because it was live action. You mean the fact that they somehow weren't biological brothers and that there was the addition of a female turtle named Venus? I don't mind the addition of Venus, but I actually totally forgot about that part. Yeah. One season, 26 episodes, two of them were clip shows. It's been forever since I saw that. And I am just romanticizing my childhood again. Never mind. Probably. But yeah, Andros was a good leader. He had some great development from being uh, basically one of those uh, close, close-hearted close characters. <coughs> and then, you know, expanded himself so that he could learn to appreciate the other rangers and eventually love Ashley. I totally ship those two. You do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Red and yellow makes blue. Wait. Yeah. I think you mean red and yellow makes orange. So they created Boom. How much of a twist would that be if Boom was their kid? Someone went down, wrong down the line, something horribly. <laughs> yeah. Also, can you just imagine Ashley turning into um, Boone's mom? Because remember, we saw her. Oh, yeah, we saw his parents. Nah, nope, that's not the thing. That's not the case. Um, it was a good episode. The villain stuff was so good. She, Astronema was raised as an evil person. And then... Afterwards, she basically gets bored. Mm-hmm. She gets. I'm still listening. She gets technopathically taken over by uh, Dark Spectre. Okay. And she's even more heartless than ever. Hmm. <coughs> and she is terrifying. All right then. And her hair and her, and her changing hair color too. Yeah. For. First it was purple, then we have one that's blonde, there was a black one, and then she ends up being a redhead for the rest of that, after she gets corrupted. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, but before before we move on from In Space, let's not forget one of the best things they provided us with. The Psycho Rangers? The Psycho Rangers. Ah. Evil Power, Power Rangers. Rangers. We only got that once with, once with Tommy... And we get it later on with guys well, like Ryan and Sanaku. Technically, can you count Tommy as evil? Technically, he was. He was but technically, he, he was mystically he was corrupted. More, yeah, he was more brainwashed then. Also, don't forget about the evil the evil Billy clone or Zed's evil rangers. Uh-oh, don't remind me of the evil rangers. They, <laughs> they look like homemade school projects. <laughs> don't remind me of the evil rangers. I'm just saying. Yeah, but the Psycho Rangers were terrifying. They were badass, and they even made a comeback in uh, the Lost Galaxy series. They did. Yeah, they um, at the end. Uh, I like that. His is more of a statement. Mine's more of a question. At the end of their little uh, escapade, yeah, they end up they end up turn, being turned into ghosts because they're right destroyed, then. and okay. then due to some high tech monster using a machine to turn people into data chips mm-hmm. uh they end up getting turned into data cards too all right and so uh deviat one of the henchmen villains of lost galaxy ends up getting his hands on them and they're re-energized to fight the lost galaxy rangers which brings us into arguably the first full team team up in power rangers because oh wait Second, there was the Alien Rangers in the Zeo episode, but do we really count that? I don't remember that. Yeah, that was a thing. Uh, Justin, oh, yeah, I don't Justin came back to help <coughs> the Space Rangers when they came to Earth that time. But that was about it. Yeah, that was about it. So, yeah, probably the first real Power Ranger team team up. But. I got ahead of myself. Shall we go rewind to where we introduced Lost Galaxy and the fact that the Space Rangers saved the Earth? Well, let's talk about a bit more about the, psych- the Psycho Rangers creation a bit. Because remember, they, um, they all had their own, uh, own color counterparts. Red, black, yellow, blue, and pink. Yeah, and they were all obsessed with destroying them. Yep. And going to the comic book canon, I'm going to be doing that quite a bit. Psycho Green. Yeah. That's a thing. I called it. 
I freaking called it and he's way only, back when. And he's okay. the only one with a kill count. Oh, he is? Three Rangers. Who did he kill? Blue, pink, and black. From which? which? Zordon's 1969 Mighty Morphin team. What? Yep. You mean those Cowboy Rangers? No, 1969. The team that came before Jason um, and um, the Angel Grove gang. Oh. Wow. So do they have the same suits or? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Asian male pink, black male yellow, Russian male blue, um, I think she was either Middle Eastern or Indian, female black, and, oh, a fe- so and female and white female red. So they're basically the Captain Planet. Of sorts. Yeah, and Cycle Green straight up marked blue, pink, and black. Wow. And impressive. And the and he even had a dagger too, a very ornate looking dagger. Of course he did. So just like a certain other Green Ranger we know, Tommy. And, and that we're that, not talking much about Tommy because yeah, we know it's been far was, established that people hero worship him at this was point. Was Tommy based off of that? No, this is something new for the comics. Oh, okay. And um, apparently his dagger is actually now used as a power source um, for um, for Terra Nova. Oh, wow. And one more thing. Go ahead. Psycho Green was a Power Ranger in this canon. Really? Who was he? The Green Ranger. A well, Green yes. Ranger from... Um, actually, I'll save that for when you can start going down the line to see what Damn first. it. All right. So let's, uh, let's wrap up in space. So they save, <coughs> they save the Earth from imminent destruction, and they yeah. somewhat destroy all evil in the universe. Well, the evil is never truly destroyed. Yeah, but it was kind of established that this one was because Zordon's um, wave of... wave Yeah, the Z-Wave resonated throughout the entire universe. It, okay. It turned any evil monsters to dust. It turned, like, uh, Astronema, Divatox, Rita, Zed back into humans. All right. They didn't realize Zed was human to begin with. Yeah, I didn't think so. They, they end up looking weird. And then they just started waltzing on Triforia. Maybe they're just... I think that's because they're just so overwhelmed with good, they just had to just dance. It's like they actually good. felt any. It's like they actually felt some actual positive emotion. God knows how long. That's fair, but let's move on to Lost Galaxy, where they try and establish a space colony. Yep. And yet, most of it still takes place in sets. Well, yeah. Still though, you know. Biodomes. What? Yeah, biodomes, Terra Venture. Do you know what the uh, sort of idea for Lost Galaxy was? Sword in the Stone in Space. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. The Quasar Sabers, which for a, for about $100, you can order <coughs> custom-made Quasar Sabers off Wish. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. I'm planning on getting one soon. But you, those, there are five swords in the stone on a planet called Miranoi, and chosen warriors have to be, have to, are the only ones worthy enough to pull the sword from the stone. Technically... It would only be one if we're going based off of what that was originally but, based off. Yeah, of. but there are five swords, so yeah. five chosen guardians. Could you technically say possibly six of the Magnet Defender? No, nah, he no. Ne- <coughs> oh, yeah, but he never kept the Red Quasar Saber. Okay, so there's a guy named Leo who uh, his brother <coughs> Frank was actually the one who pulled the Quasar Saber out. Until the Earth, until that planet sort of swallowed him up, and okay. he gave the Quasar Saber to his brother Leo. So technically, throughout the series, Leo constantly doubts himself because he doesn't know if he was truly worthy to wield the saber, unlike his brother. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and uh, Mike dies. Oh. Until he, his body, in some sort of a comatose state, is uh, possessed by the Magnet Offender, who is a sp- he's basically a spirit of vengeance. All right, then. And uh, eventually, uh, along with their Galactabeasts, which are actual living zords as opposed to technology. Yeah. They're living animals that become robotic to form the Megazord. And, uh, yeah, there are a few other zords that they tame, but after that, Mike basically comes back to life and maintains his magnet defender powers after the spirit of vengeance has gotten justice for his dead son and he's at peace. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there's a dead child in this series. All right, then. Um, Pink Ranger um, basically died, too. I was getting to that. That happened the episode after To the Tenth Power, when the Psycho Rangers return. Yep. For some reason, when the... <coughs> When the Space and Galaxy Rangers teamed up and they destroyed the Psycho Rangers, yeah. somehow Psycho Pink survived and gets word of some sort of ancient sort of ancientness. And ancient sort of ancientness. It's essentially what it is, and it's in the middle of a field somewhere on a distant desert planet, and it constantly grows stronger the more it's wielded. And then, uh, in order to save her friends, she cuts the sword in half mm-hmm. and dies. All right, then. She's literally a ghost. The reason for that was that her actress was undergoing, what, cancer treatment? Yeah, because there was a chance that she actually would not have survived, actually, because it was actually getting pretty advanced at that point. That sucks. Luckily, though, she did survive, and she beat the cancer. Yeah. Yay! But we did get a new pink uh, pink uh, Lost Galaxy Ranger out of it. Okay. You remember Astronema? Yes. She's uh, actually the sister of the Red Space Ranger, Andros, named Caron. All right. Guess who becomes the new Lost Galaxy Ranger? Her. Her. And she con- continues dealing with more of uh, more of her sin, more of the sins from her past when she was when she thought she was evil. Uh-huh. And towards the end, we get arguably the first and the s- well, no, Andros technically had a battleizer, but we get, in my opinion, one of the dumbest looking battleizers in the series because it's basically two metal boots and like a giant ship. That's attached to their back, to their chest and their back. Okay. And they have, like, stretchy arm, grabby claws, and a blaster. It looks really ridiculous. Sounds really ridiculous yeah, to be, just by what you're describing. To be fair, that was, a, that was an American-only thing. Sentai actually copied the battleizer from us. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Ooh, technically this is, it's not a battleizer, but it is a power-up. The Lights of Orion. Oh, yeah. I like the lights of Orion. I know I'm staring out the window. It's fine. You're still listening and intriguing in the conversation, so you're fine. You're fine. No, there's bubbles across the street. Oh. Bubbles! Because I was wondering what was, like, floating in the air, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Around kids? And I was like, oh. Bubbles. It's a bubble machine, too. Wasn't there a bubble monster at some point in the series? I believe so. Yeah, I don't remember where where it was from, though. that. Oh, you're fine. <coughs> ah, much better. You're going to be all right? Yeah, I'm fine. This this happens every now and then. All right. Uh, so, yeah, the rain... Apparently, Deviat, because the main villain villainess was Trakina, which mm-hmm. is some sort of a bug lady hybrid, uh, because of some weird fusion pod, uh, yeah. Deviat takes over uh, Trakina's body. Okay. And they fuse into one super twisted and psychotic creature. So Leo ends up destroying Trakina, but she somehow survives into the next series, which is arguably one of my favorites, Lightspeed Rescue. Rescue. Go-go five. Yeah, I find it interesting that it was civilians randomly chosen based off their skills who became the Power Rangers. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and of course there's Carter fucking Grayson. Lightspeed Rescue Red Ranger. Who is your favorite? Easily one of the best Red Rangers. Kelsey. His his favorite was Kelsey. Was it? <laughs> I don't think it was. I think that was a joke. It was. Oh. <laughs> your favorite was Chad. I don't even remember if I used to rescue, really. We'll make that a day. But Lightspeed Rescue... <coughs> was one of the only other times at the start that the Rangers were part of a military organization. All right, then. So all their Zords and whatnot were basically hand-built by a bunch of mechanics uh, as a part of a uh, aqua base. Nice. Which, horrible place for a headquarters underwater. Horrible place for a headquarters underwater. Because that's eventually what comes back to bite them towards the end of 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 the season. But you know what their bad guys were this time? What? Demons. Demons? Yeah. Like actual demons demons? Actual demons demons. Apparently Mariner Bay, which is where, they, uh, where they're established, was uh-huh. built on an ancient demon burial ground. Yeah, uh, that sounds... Like something Power Rangers would do? No, it sounds like something that's actually true. 
Yeah, of course, that's, that's how it goes. People like that are lucky when they live in places like <coughs> Mariner Bay, uh, Ocean Bluff, mm-hmm. uh, Pearl Harbor. But... What? Pearl Harbor. I'm pretty sure one of the, one of the places the Power Rangers live has a harbor in it. Yeah, but I don't think it's Pearl Harbor. <clears throat> Probably not. But uh, we get one one of the one of the other instances of an evil ranger in the first American only uh, Power Ranger, right? Yes, actually, the Titanium Ranger, Ryan. I think you mentioned about him. Yeah, Ryan was tricked into thinking that his father didn't love him by demons because okay. because of a deal with a demon. Uh, they want. His son, uh, what's his name? Uh, Commander, Captain, Captain Mitchell. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's it. Because, uh, because of an instance involving his daughter who, and his son, when they were on their way home, it was raining, and so they ended up going over a cliff, Uh but, uh, he was holding on to, to a root, and, uh, his daughter was around his neck, and Ryan was holding on to his shoe, and he was about to fall, so he prayed that someone would help, and a demon came and took Ryan away as a part of the deal, and he wouldn't see him again until his 20th birthday. That doesn't make sense. Well, demons don't need to make sense. They just need to be dicks. This is true. Oh, yeah. But towards the end, Ryan realizes the mistake, and he goes ahead and uh, rejoins the Rangers. Actually, now that I think about it, it does actually make sense. Mm Mm-hmm. But, anyway, uh, sorry, go ahead. But then we get uh, another team episode where Drakina survives and is played by a completely different actress. Okay. <coughs> and, well, it's not a good team up episode because most of it is just focused on uh, Carter helping a little girl after a building full of people is taken hostage by Drakina and turned into energy. Okay. And then the Lost Galaxy Rangers inexplicably come over from Miranoi and help team up and defeat Drakina and save people. Mm. It's not a very eventful episode. Mm. After that, however, the Rangers eventually defeat Queen Banshira, who is the main demon villain, after she killed her own son, Olympias, and gained his power. Okay. It's a demon. Even family ties don't matter. Apparently not. Nope. Uh, yeah, so as far as we know, the Lightspeed Rangers are still a part of an organ- part of that organization. Or at least Carter is. Uh, Joel, the Green Ranger, and uh, Dr. Ferris? I think so. Uh, the doctor who uh, treated the Rangers' wounds and helped build the technology. They got married. Chad, became- Chad the Blue Ranger became a lifeguard. Kelsey, the Yellow Ranger, is just doing her own thing. Okay. And Dana, Dana, the Pink Ranger, is a paramedic. All right, then. Carter is still doing his Ranger duties. So now it's time for... Time Force. Force. Time for... Time Time Force! Force. Plus there's quantum power. That too. Mm. We'll get to that. Yep. So, who knows the story of Time Force? You two. Namely him. You don't remember much, do you? Uh, for a certain point, I basically start, stopped getting super invested when the team basically changed everything and started at Lost Galaxy. I still watched, but I wasn't fully invested. All right. I thought you thought Time Force was your favorite. I loved the theme song. I liked ah. Time Force. But I was still in this, like, rewatching it, but still, uh, stuff gets away from me. All okay. right. Okay. Well, Time Force is explicitly... <coughs> Rangers from the future, and they are chasing a mutant from the from the future into the past who happens to have killed their Red Ranger. Okay. And right so, before he got married, too. Yeah. All right, the Pink then. Ranger's fiance was the Red Ranger. Okay. And so Jen, Pink, uh, along with uh, Katie, Lucas, and Trip, they... Literally hijack and steal a time machine and the chronomorphers to go back in time to get Rancic because 
the Time Force operatives can't do anything if he's escaped into the past. All right, then. So that makes him all, all around useless at that point. Yeah, because they basically said, we can't do anything because it'll disrupt the timeline. Yeah. No, that's, that's actually part of their established timeline. Mm, nope. But they go into the past and they meet Alex's ancestor. Alex was the Red Ranger. And Jen eventually falls in love with Wes. Okay. After a bunch of animosity. Yeah, which is, when you think about it, <coughs> it's kind of like going back in time and falling in love with your with your friend's, oh. like, great-grandfather or something. Okay. Don't read too much into that. Not going to. So they basically keep fighting a bunch of mutants. Yeah. As per the usual standard of uh, Power Ranger series. Okay. Until they end up getting a sixth ranger, who is quite... Um, is that the implementation? He's a prick. Is that the implementation of the Quantum Ranger? Yep, Quantum. Uh, so apparently, when the, when Time Force was originally uh, trying to experiment with time travel, they ended up losing the Quantum Controller, which is the what they used to turn into the Morpher. Yeah, and it's Zord in time. Coincidentally, they find the quantum controller box in 2001, where the show takes place, and Eric steals and gets a hold of the Morpher. He stole it from from some of the mutants. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of thievery in this series. I see that. And so he then eventually gets the Quantasaurus Rex, which is in the Jurassic period, after another mutant tries to go back in time and get it then... And takes control of it until Eric gains control of it with his morpher. Okay. And so Eric and Wes have been at odds with one another because Wes is a rich boy who's trying to do his own thing now, separate from his father, Mm -hmm. who is arrogant as beyond belief. He wants his son to do this. He wants to do that. He wants to go to a good college. He wants to follow in his father's footsteps. A big lesson of Time Force is you have control of your own destiny. Well, yeah. And that is established very well, considering that Wes and Jen, by the end of the series, which is proof in Wild Force as well, are maintaining a relationship through time. Uh, yep. And er and by the end of it... Well, they do say things get better with time. That has so many meanings in this show right now, but... Uh, Anyway, Eric eventually becomes Wes's best friend and partner because uh, he's a member of the Silver Guardians, which is basically a mutant fighting police force run by Mr. Collins, Wes's father. And so Wes and his father eventually come to an understanding with one another because he actually does a big 180 after his own near-death experience at the hands of Rancic, realizing Mm -hmm. that... He only wants his son to be happy and to do what he thinks is right for his own destiny and how proud he is of his son for taking that initiative. All right, then. The only twist is later's like, so, son, I have a proposition for you. Ah, Dad, come on! Would you please do me the honor of being the leader of the Silver Guardians? And Wes says, only if Eric's my partner. And the rest is, as they say, History. History. Until Wild Force comes around. Yeah. Ooh, we almost forgot to mention this. Rancic is one of <coughs> one of the only other villains who willingly reformed. You can willingly? Te- well, yeah. yeah, after because Rancic, go figure, has a daughter, and after his daughter almost dies protecting a human baby, he realizes how much of his rage and frustration against humanity almost cost him, and he's like just take me in. I don't want to hurt anyone else. Aww. And... Who's he, the other one? Is it later or is it earlier? Did we mention him already? Alex? You said the one who reformed. That's Rancic. Yeah. No, you said, she, is there another one? You said two. She's talking about villains that oh. reformed. Well, well, you can technically say that Rita and Zed were, but that's technically forced by the Z-Wave. So... Rancic might be the very first reformed villain. Okay. But moving on into Wild Force. Also, this one out there, according to like consensus. Yeah. 
Time Force and Time Force and Wild Force were some of the best ones because they actually step they actually kept very close to the original on um, the Sentai series. Nice. Well, not only that, but they also had some really great acting to help back <coughs> it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. If you watch the first two episodes and you see Jen's reaction to seeing Wes after seeing Alex just die, uh huh. She that's like Oscar worthy shit right there. Erin Cahill is really awesome, and she still looks good. Really hope we meet her one day. That'd be nice. Making a plan for Ranger Stop. The, one, of the real, one of the real true leaders. Yeah. To be fair, Jen she, was the actual true leader of the, of the time of Rangers. Yeah, she was pink, but she was basically the leader, because Wes followed her lead despite him wearing the color red. Okay. That's one of the first seasons where they sort of twist that initiative. It's sort of similar to later in Wild Force, since the Yellow Ranger sort of was the leader for most of the time until the Red Ranger joined. But Taylor is... Yeah. I'm going to say this now. Taylor is the Captain Marvel we should have got. Agreed. Yeah, because Taylor was a member of the um, Air Force until she had an encounter with something otherworldly, which is her Wild Zord. Yep. The, the Yellow Eagle. And so she eventually took initiative with that and became a Power Ranger. We saw that uh, video yesterday, actually. Yep. Taylor was badass. She's easily one of my favorite um, Yellow Rangers. If not my, my, top, my top five, Let's not see. top one. Let's see. Along with, along with Taylor, the other uh, three Rangers before Cole, the red one, joined. We have uh, Max, Blue, Danny, Black, and Didn't Alicia? I think so. I think it was Alicia who was oh, the White Ranger. But even in Wild Force, didn't she still lead, even though... Sometimes, until Cole sort of grew into his own as leader, because he was very naive the first few episodes. Okay. Because he was raised in the jungle. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's literally a Tarzan person. And I love how he ends up meeting these guys. He saves a bunch of animals from being experimented on, and the next day, uh, Danny, Max, and Alicia are all being really nice and friendly to him. And then, as I told you before, Taylor punches him in the gut and just says he's been drafted. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor could kick, um, could kick Brie Larson's ass. Oh, yes. More than certainly. Do you know who her actress is? No, but we'll look it up later. Oh, t- hell yeah. Okay. And uh, we have another instance of an evil ranger in here, but he was taken over by a cursed wolf mask. But Merrick is easily the most bland sixth ranger we've got. He He is the silver lunar ranger. Oh, okay. Which he has the uh, he has the wolf zord, the alligator zord, and the hammerhead shark zord. All right. Uh, Cole had red lion. Max had blue shark. Danny had iron bison. Oh wait, no. Blazing Lion, Surging Shark, Iron Bison, Iron Bison, Noble Tiger, Soaring Eagle. Yeah. Respective with Alicia and Taylor afterwards. Yep. And Master Org got creepy when he came back afterwards. Got creepy. Yeah, he was he was pretty much creepy through and through. It's like a humanized golem face, but he is also sort of he has a grudge against Cole because he loved Cole's mother, but uh-huh. she was with someone else. Think of oh. it like think of it like an unre- um, an un- uh, a Under- snake without Under- redemption. Yeah, yeah. And towards the end, <coughs> he ends up destroying the Wild Zords. All right then. Oh yeah, that's right. They're living. Fun. They're living. They're living spirits too. They're living spirits, and he kills them. Fun. The main villain is literally slaughtering animals. You you hear my sarcasm. Yeah. But towards the end, we have probably one of my favorite sort of speeches that we get in Power Rangers. Which is? We may not have our powers anymore, and our wild swords may be gone, but they still live in here, inside us. I like that. It fits for Wild Force. It It does. does. With how cheesy it can be, it fits. for all of Power Rangers, though? I guess you could say that, but more so with them. Okay. More so with any of the seasons that have living Zords. I don't yeah. know. It just it just feels like it just fits better with Wild Force overall than anything else because they were actual living mystical spirits of um of the animal kingdom. 
Yeah, and what we ended up <coughs> what we end up getting later is that they <coughs> end up resurrecting their wild zords through their faith in them, and they kill Master Org. Nice. Unfortunately, there's this weird thing towards the end where Princess Shayla, who is basically their Zordon, only yeah. more useless, uh-huh. is like says. You have saved the world from the orgs. Now I need you to return your jackets and your f- and your morphers. Okay. So that's basically their way of saying that um, uh, there's no likely we're we're never gonna see you guys in costume again. Well, that sucks. Yeah, Pretty because much. I think that with the way they that they did that because they didn't know if Power Rangers was going to survive because in the transition from Wild Force to Ninja Storm, they were moving to New Zealand, where it's ironically banned to view Power Rangers in New Zealand because of all the excessive violence. That's, I like that. But that's stupid because they actually get um they actually get Super Sentai there. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, it's like really stupid, stupid. Yeah, but because um. Because it wasn't just the fact that they were transitioning, because at first they didn't even have any plans to, because Wild Force was, be, was supposed to be the final season of okay. Power Rangers as a franchise as a whole. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but... But we, then it picked up and it continued, right? That's because it's freaking popular. You never know stop at Power Rangers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Additionally, though, Reinforcements from the Future is probably my favorite team-up episode, because we got a team-up between the Time Force Rangers and the Wild Force Rangers. It further develops what happened in Time Force. Okay. Like, Rancic is a mutant who's horribly deformed on one side, Aww. but he's but as he was helping the Wild Force and Time Force Rangers destroy mute orgs, which is a fusion of mutants and orgs from different parts of time, yeah. he ends up destroying their mutant half, and... It cure it makes them normal again. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and they they further establish more stuff in Time Force through there. Like uh, Lucas got together with Rancic's daughter, which she had a crush on him throughout the entire Time Force series. Okay. And um, Jen and Wes still being together. They even uh, tease a budding relationship between Eric and Taylor. Totally shipped the quantum and quantum and soaring eagle. To the toughest, doing the toughest badasses in um in that series. Ooh, that's Wait, right. What about the, he is that one guy who had to muster up the courage to ask her out, right? No. I don't know. That sounds like Eric, though. Maybe, but he never did that on screen. Yeah, they just flirted. Okay, then I must be thinking about somebody else. But we almost forgot the 10th anniversary special of Power Rangers that occurred on Wild Force. Which is? Forever Forever Red. Red. We got 10 Red Rangers. We got got Tommy, we got Jason, Cole, Carter, Leo, uh, Andros, TJ, uh, Ark, Ark, the Red Alien Ranger, Mm -hmm. Wes, and Eric all getting together to go to the moon to stop the remnants of the Machine Empire from uh, using... Serpentera. Which is Zed's evil Zord, which runs on only, like, three AAA batteries, so it uses up its power real quick. And so they st- they go to the moon to stop them from using Serpentera to destroy the Earth, and we okay. get a great unmorphed fight sequence with the, ra- with the Rangers individually fighting Cogs, and then when they morph, we get two on one with the Rangers, respectively, fighting uh, five generals. elite generals of the Machine Empire, oh. who happen to be Big Bad Beetleborgs. Yeah, the hero suits from Big Bad Beetleborgs. I don't see. Yeah, there were five of them. Actually, there were eight. No. No, there were only five of the Machine Empire guys. No, 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 because there was more than that, because they use um, the, ri- the original um, um, Big Bad Beetleborgs hero suits... And then there's super forms. That's not what happened. It was only a 30-minute episode. Yeah, but no, seriously, there was actually more than that. I'm sure, but they only used five suits. Well, we'll look this up later. Trust me, I've watched that episode so <coughs> many times. Yeah, anyway. I could probably quote it, too. But Probably. Anyway, that's what happened there. And it was still a great episode until the end where Cole uses his flying motorcycle to blow up Serpentera. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, they should have made that a one-hour episode special. Unfortunately, that is not what they ended up doing. But what they did end up doing was revising the show for another season, which 
okay, let me let me quickly explain this. Mighty Morphin to in space and arguably lost galaxy is what's known as the Zordon era of Power Rangers. Yeah. Yep. Because that's how long they've had Zordon. And when Zordon was destroyed in uh, Power Rangers in space, which is why the arguably part with Lost Galaxy still being a part of that, yeah. from Lost Galaxy to Wild Force is what's called the post-Zordon era. Okay. Yeah. And after Wild Force, Disney ended up taking over production of Power Rangers, which is why from Ninja Storm until RPM is what's called the Disney era of Power Rangers. Okay. The New Zealand era, actually. New Zealand Disney era of Power Rangers. <coughs> okay. So, why don't we just jump right into Ninja Storm? Ah, uh, Ninja Storm. That's when I started getting revitalized with my Power Ranger love. Yeah, because it was on one of the first Power Ranger shows on JetX. Yep. Oh, we gotta get that JetX video done. Yes, we do. I didn't have JetX. It was part of Toon Disney. I didn't have I didn't have that. Yeah, that was like the extended cable patch. Unfortunately. I didn't have cable. No. Yeah. And I still don't. You don't. Nobody, You're not missing much. I yeah, don't. you can find most of the old stuff on YouTube or watch cartoon online. Or just any other streaming site, stuff like that. Essentially. But Ninja Storm. Deep in the mountains, secret ninja academies trained our future protectors, and a set of ancient scrolls chose three who would be chosen above the other to become the Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Go, Power Rangers, go, Ninja Storm, let's, let's go. go! I was waiting for you guys to do that. It was the first instance of a three-man team of Power Rangers. In the States, at least. In the States, yeah. And they didn't let that last for very long, because... I think it's episode five we get introduced officially to the Thunder Rangers. It could have been that soon. No, it was. Trust me. Oof. We got like three. I know that we get the no. We get the solid first three episodes, and at the end of episode three, we get teased about the Thunder Rangers, and then episode four, we get introduced to Blake and Hunter. But uh, before that, Shane. Uh, rest in peace, Pua Magasiva. That was so unexpected. Yeah, the red Ninja Storm Ranger. Then there was Tori, blue one. And Dustin, yellow Ninja Storm. First yellow, male yellow ranger in Power Rangers? In the States, at least. In the States. And first, Tori was the first female Wait, blue no, one. wait. Forgot about Alien Ranger. Oh, yeah. Did that go double for blue to then? Uh, for female? Yeah. Yes! It was the first one? Yeah, um, uh, not counting Alien Rangers, Dustin was the first true yellow uh, male ranger, and Tori was the first blue female ranger. Yep. <coughs> and so, uh, they were misfits at, at, a Wind Ninja, at the Wind Ninja Academy. They were always late, they were slipping on their training, so uh -huh. it makes sense that they would be the ones to become the Power Rangers. Yeah. And everything from their morphers to their zords was built by Cam, who eventually becomes the Green Samurai Ranger. Yep. But this is another instance where everything is man-made by the Power Rangers. And Blake and Hunter were first evil rangers because for some reason, after Lothor captured the Thunder Ninja Academy where they were training, they somehow believed him when Lothor told them that Shane, Dustin, and Tori Sensei... Sensei Watanabe? Watanabe? Watanabe. Had killed their parents. Oh, yeah, and Sensei Watanabe was somehow inexplicably turned into a guinea pig. Because he yeah. had a double role as Sensei and Lothor. All right, then. That's right, he was. Yeah, so... <coughs> for some reason, they believed him when... Uh, the obvious villain told them that someone obviously good had killed their parents, but when they understood that, after a weird brainwashing incident, they joined the team. And then shortly after that, Cam has to go back in time, again, more time travel, and uh, obtain a power that can save the rangers from being destroyed by a monster, which turns out to be the green sam samurai amulet from his mother. Which was lost, which was lost in history. Yeah. And was originally worn by his mother. Who is his mother? Dead. No, who is she? Oh, 
it's uh, not it's not connected to a Power Ranger thing. It's just it's just backstory. Just backstory. Okay. Yeah, but he becomes the Green Samurai Ranger, and uh, the six of them, with a number of alien threats that they have to deal with, eventually come to a close fighting Lothor, which I keep realizing we keep skipping over some of these battleizers. Oh, yeah. Okay, we talked about um, we talked about Leo's battleizer in Lost Galaxy. Carter's battleizer is that he's just basically wearing a motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, Wes's battleizer is knight armor uh, over the Time Force uniform. And Eric's battleizer is uh, sort of a golden armored mode with rollerblades. Don't forget about Cole. And Cole is the animarium armor where it's basically gold chest plates. Yeah. And it probably looks the best, the best and most sleek ones. Shane's battleizer is actually given to us interestingly because an alien woman named Skyla who had an encounter <coughs> with him when he was a kid chose him to pass her energy on to because he saved her life. Okay then. And I think his might be one of my favorite battleizers because it's like it's sort of a puzzle piece type of setup on him but it increases his speed and agility and there's a flight mode where he gets the wings of a hawk. Hmm. And it looks really good. But apparently, despite how much I don't like Lothor as a villain, because there's too much humor on the villain side... Because he's a joke. He is a joke villain. But he is one hell of a ninja fighter, and he ends up stealing all the rangers' powers with with Cam's samurai amulet. Okay. Destroys their megazords, destroys Shane's battleizer, and depowers them until Shane, Tori, and Dustin have to use their true inner ninja powers, which is apparently, like beams of air, earth, and water, and sent him into an abyss of evil. Yeah. Where he'll never be seen again. And still Dino Thunder. Yeah. He, All right, then. He comes back in Dino Thunder. Speaking of which, let's get on to a real legacy season. The true legacy season. Yep. We'll get to you, Megaforce. But Dino Thunder uh, first starts off with the reintroduction of Tommy. So already you have a former ranger passing the torch to a new generation and eventually taking back that torch and using it alongside them. Okay. Uh, Alongside actually, you know, being a, um, an archeologist, an actual doctor. Yeah. He went from, he went from a martial artist to a, um, race car driver to a teacher of, uh, fossils and anthropology. Nice. In the span of about ten years. That's not bad. It's weird how that happens, but who Don't knows? Don't question it. I won't question it. Do you rely? Okay. And so with Tommy, uh, he, uh, this is back to the whole theory with Zeo. There's a theory about uh, how the dino gems were obtained, the red, blue, and yellow dino gems, Apparently, Tommy used the remainder of his Zeo crystal to forge them from the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs years ago. That would that that's interesting. Except there's still something of a remnant of his Zeo crystal remaining because how else would he have gotten access to that file in his Master Morpher? Yeah. that's another thing though. The, um, that I can definitely kind of disprove like how that wouldn't work. The black Dino Gem and the white Dino Gem. Yeah, they could have been separated differently and obtained through different means. Yeah, but how exactly, though? Mesagog. But um, but still, Zeocrystal. Any equivalent power source or enough patience and whatnot could have done it. Like how when Tommy was using using it, the black dino gem shell as a shield, it was destroyed by an, an extreme amount of power fired from Zeltrax and Elsa. I don't know. I just don't, won't believe that the fact that the Zeo crystal could just, like, you know, be, just be used and just basically kind of, like, taken down a peg. Well, probably not taken down a peg, but uh, <laughs> if, it, if it acquired so much power through Tommy's ten years, at least, before while he was a ranger... Because he passed the TJ, the turbo powers to TJ, so he still has a Zeo crystal. Well, yeah. He gave, like, part of that power to forge dino gems. All right, then. Oh, right. Uh, Connor is the red ranger. Ethan's the blue ranger. And, and here is yellow. Yep. 
and another three-person team, instantly redacted by episode four and five when Tommy becomes the Black Ranger. Okay. And then later down the line, when we get Trent as a White Ranger. Yep. <coughs> Trent was an interesting evil ranger because the white dino gem was corrupted, and so it ended up creating a split personality, which was the White Ranger, mm-hmm. who is evil, until the personalities began, like, merging, and then some inexplicable, some sort of laser thing fried the evil out of the dino gem. I don't know. It was it was interesting. White Ranger still looks badass, though. Yeah, that's because he was a badass, powerful ranger. Yeah, it's interesting how most uh, extra rangers have the ability of super speed, and yet they never use it again. Never use the ender powers again. Matter of fact, if anyone, Trin kind of got the short end stick because the ranger power is strong, but the uh, but the actual dino ability is is kind of worthless. Yeah, you see, this is one of the instances of civilian powers, and Connor's dino power is super speed. Okay. E- Ethan's is some sort of protective. Sh- Shield it, um, shield it on Triceratops skin. Yeah, right. he like grows Triceratops skin on his arms, which hurts too. Okay. Uh, Kira's is some sort of banshee cry. It's on, it's a pterodactyl cry. Um, yeah. Cry. Tommy can turn legit invisible. And nice. Trent's power is camouflage. Camouflage. Isn't that basically the same thing? Yeah, except invisible, you got complete transparency. Fair enough. Camouflage if if, <coughs> if you you have to stay very still if you're up against something. Yeah. You never even see him use it either. Yeah, you do. When? When he's sneaking in and out of Mezagog's lair. Oh yeah, let's talk about Mezagog and how he's probably one of the best villains and one of the most interesting just developments. Oh, now that's a real mutant there. Yeah. So apparently, because of some sort of a means to combine dinosaurs with uh, technology. Yes. Uh, uh, Anton Mercer ended up creating a split personality who is a dino mutant named Mezagog. Okay. So their relationship is a very Jekyll and Hyde situation. All right. And, but towards the end, Mezagog eventually separates Anton from himself so that it's just Mezagog. Hmm. And... Oh, yeah, Connor's Battleizer. It's dumb, stupid. It just combines Super Dino Mode with his uh, enhanced Jurassic Power, which is a mini Battleizer. And Super Dino Mode, they just grow spikes and get faster. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you get spiky, speedy spikes plus mini Battleizer and get Mr. Fantastic stretchy arms? Probably has something to do with his, um, his, um, his, dino, um, his T-Rex staff weapon. Maybe. Remember, remember that thing is oh, could actually stretch out and get longer. Not that we've actually seen in the show, except maybe once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, but by the end, by the, by the end of it, they end up using all of their Dino Gem energy to destroy Mesagog, which leaves another instance of how they can no longer retain their powers. Uh huh. Until the Master Morpher. Okay. But there's an. A weak explanation for an SPD when that team up happens. Oh yeah, speaking of team ups, the Ninja Storm Dino Thunder team up is Meh. decent. It's all right. It's decent. It shows off the Ninja Rangers as being more competent and powerful than uh, the Dino Rangers, but the team up battle towards the end is awesome. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I'll show it to you later. Okay. But let's move on. Into an element of the future, which is probably brought on by elements that happened in, in the past during Time Force, where we get Space Patrol Delta. SPD emergency. Truth. And another interesting fact is that three of the Rangers, uh, Sky, Bridge, and uh, Sid, were trained to be Power Rangers. Nice. While Z and Jack, who become the Yellow and Red Rangers respectively, were street rats and yeah. thieves. Uh, yep. Super powered Street Rats and Thieves. Yeah, they they all have civilian powers, too, because apparently all of their parents worked at SPD before they were born. Yeah, they were all scientists. Um, they were apparently doing genetic testing on them. And let's go over those powers, <laughs> shall we? The the one where he trained to be red, but he got yep. green instead? 
He got blue. He got blue. He got blue instead. instead. Yep, because we let's start off with um, let's start off with our red, shall we? Yeah, Jack has the ability to to ba- sort of become intangible and go through solid objects. He can face with solid. Um, he just face with solid matter completely. Yeah, he can face through solid matter. Sky has the power to pull up shielding. Yeah, force fields. Nice. Bridge. Is act, actually has um, psychometry and um, is um, mild tele- um, telepathic abilities. Okay. So but he can actually read auras. Yeah, his main thing is reading auras and, dete- nice. and detecting energy. Like the first episode, he read that there was something off of A, of A Squad right right off the bat. Bridge is my favorite character. He's everyone's favorite character. Yeah, he does he- he does hand- headstands in order to uh, get epiphanies, and he has a thing for buttery toast. Yeah, he loves his toast buttery. buttery. Is that where you get that from? Yes. Yeah. Buttery. I, I actually have a problem saying buttery without them doing that now. Say it. Buttery. God damn it. <laughs> he does it with the other hand. All right. Z has the power to create holographic clones no, of herself. Full on physical clones of herself. Well, they can also become Shadow holographic. Clone Jutsu. Essentially, and Sid has the power to take anything like uh, like a metal and absorb it into her hand. Nice. And actually, and actually do a fist of steel. So I think she would have the most powerful ability. Probably. Well, strength wise, I should say. Offensively. Yeah. Um, Sky definitely has it defensively. Yeah. Let's not f- let's not forget about Anubis Doggy Kruger. Ah, I love that dog. Yeah, Anubis uh, becomes the Shadow Ranger, wh- which he helps fight alongside them sometimes, but he's still their mentor and the leader of SBD Earth Branch. He is literally a alien dog with all the abilities of said dog. You know, I wondered if someone would have done a parody of SPD where they had like a squeaky toy in the command center and he oh, just that threw it. Been funny. <laughs> he probably would have been so mad. He he would have after he went and fetched the ball. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. Good dog. And also is also easily one of the greatest ones um, of Power Ranger series. Oh, easily. The is it's actually still pretty close to actual the original Decker Ranger. Mm-hmm. Except it's the fact that um, that Doggy Kruger in in um, Decker Ranger was actually a furry instead of Scaly. Oh, okay. And he had a and he had a nickname because of because uh, uh, just like like you know you know how you have like those um those boot those journals in boot camp and like how they have their like their name like hard ass. Kruger's was the um, was the guard dog of hell. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, and then <laughs> like and then ass. there's a bit of confusion <coughs> around the middle of the series where a where a series that already takes place in the future has a ranger come back from the further future. Okay. So we're in the future, and then a ranger comes back from the future. But he never gets an actual an actual actor until like the end. So he's just actually just for like stays. a split second. Yeah. But so he just stays as a ball of light. Yeah, yeah. and it's the and it's the white Omega Ranger with Roman numeral six on his chest. Odd, considering he's technically the seventh ranger, because Kruger was the. No, sixth he's a real. One. No, he's a real sixth ranger. Well, Kruger is technically an extra hero, kind of like Sigil Man does count as a ranger. Fair, that's fair. Okay. Now the villain. Ooh, Emperor. You're forgetting. Don't forget about Cat Manx. Oh yeah, she was a ranger for about an hour, and she was the first instance of an orange ranger, but she was still white. A cat ranger. Why was she only there for an hour? Because that's about as much time as an inexperienced technician could provide for her. Well, provide for herself, but... Not to mention limited footage of Deca Deca Swan. That's not even the case, though, because she was actually a mainstay for a while. Huh. No, because, like, she kept her abilities, like, full on. Then sheer laziness, how about that? They just think they just wanted to showcase that. Because remember Nova Ranger at the end? Oh, yeah, Nova Ranger. She was there for a few episodes, too. Oh, well then. Emperor Grum. Oh, what a joke. What do you mean? He looked terrifying. It was bad. He was, but he could have had some way better, um, better trustworthy minions. You mean Broodwing? I don't even, I'm still sketchy about Mora. Oh, yeah. Why does he keep her around again? Because of her powerful ability. Oh, yeah. Mora's a little girl who ends up getting turned into a teenager and then back into Rolled, a little girl. Uh, adult. Into adult and then later back into a child and then corrupted by the Magnificence, which is an alien squid thing. 
Yeah, she basically becomes a woman child. Yeah, and she has the power to draw monsters and bring them to life. <coughs> and it's never explained where she got that ability from. <clears throat> Nor is it explored beyond, I want a tea party. Yeah, she was so annoying. <laughs> The ending was epic, though. Yes, it was. Jack ended up leaving SPD to follow his own path, and Sky became the Red Ranger. Z stayed on because she found she actually found more meaning. Yeah. Bridge was promoted to Blue. Uh, I wish we could get a ten years later thing with them. Oh, that would have been amazing. Because yeah. they got one for Decker Ranger. Yep. Wait, wasn't it he didn't become Red because he said, what if a girl was leader? And he's like, no, I would never. No, it was more of a, uh, it was a sexist thing, but it's like. Uh, more of a hesitant. hesitant. Cadet, if I were to appoint Sid as Red Ranger, would you follow her into battle? Sir, she's a girl. Or Bridge. I like Bridge, but he's technically not a leader. He wanted him to learn the lesson that you ought to follow anyone into battle regardless. Yeah, that's what I would know. Now, before we move on to your favorite season, there's... I was going to bring up the thing with uh, the team-up. I was going to bring up the Battleizers. Oh, yeah. The one of those badass Battleizers. Yeah. SPD SWAT. Oh, yeah. And then there's Jack's ba- uh, actual Battleizer. Where with he, Rick? Yeah, he combines up with an RC dog. Hey, don't just call him an RC dog. I mean, that's what he technically was as a prop, but still, we love Rick. Yeah, we do. We love that cybernetic pupper. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, they, with the team up, they inexplicably revitalize the old dino gems and bring the rangers into the future, and then later on, they go back to the past so that they, so that they can stop Grum from taking over the past. Okay. Which was technically just an extra episode. <coughs> you mean like that one little, tiny little special thing where Kira saw into the future with nothing but a tease for SPD? Yep. <coughs> and, uh, what else was there? I think that was it. Unto- and then we go into Mystic Force. Which had a lot of lost potential. Yes, it did. Mm-hmm. It's like, like Mystic Force is not one of my favorite. See, it's not like my all-time favorite seasons, but it's still one of my favorites, just because a lot, a lot of cool, um, cool stuff it had. You hate the theme song. Isra hates the. Theme I know. Song. I honestly Although, like. Although she loves Xanda. And what's the one thing we know about Plan Xander? <laughs> Plan it never works. Xander never, ever, ever, ever works. works. Ever. Oh, I love Xander. I love the characters, though. When it's actually focused on the Rangers in this, it works. Oh, yeah. When it's focusing on the ancient mystic battle, it's boring. <laughs> now... Uh, we're sort of. Justin can't disagree with that. <laughs> we're sort of running out of time with this, so let's uh, talk about some of the best parts for this for the for these remainders. Inclu- Korak. Co- I wasn't gonna say Korak. I was instead gonna say Phineas. Yeah, okay, Phineas too. Phineas the Troublin. <laughs> Whom I actually developed a character for, and I think I called him Elsim. Yeah. Elsim the Troublin. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You gotta love Phineas. Yes. <laughs> Who's played by Boom? Yeah. I love that guy. He is such a good actor for in Power Rangers. Also, John Toy, who is a suit actor for Doggy Kruger, who then became Daggeron. Oh. I thought the stuff with Daggeron was a bit dumb. Yeah, it was better handled than um, Magic Ranger. I believe. He was younger, and he married Blue. Yeah, and technically all the Rangers were siblings. No, the entire the entire Ranger family was a family. Yeah. The Ozu family. Yeah. And Genji's name was Smokey. <laughs> Smokey the cat. <laughs> Smokey the cat. And there was also a talking mandric root. <laughs> Not gonna go there. So let's move on to next battleizer, which you constantly say is one of the most badass battleizers. It is one of the coolest ones. It becomes part dragon. Yeah, but the whole color scheme <coughs> still bothers me, though. 
There's red and blue, which is fine, but then there's gold, silver, light blue. There's just too many colors. This is Fireheart had a lot of colors. Yeah, and I don't think he looked that great either, despite the fact that he was a dragon. But he was the last living dragon. Fair. And there are one dragon and no dragon. Yeah. The ending sucked, though. The ending could have been way better, honestly. Yeah. We defeat the, we defeat the master of evil by overfeeding him. To be fair, that's how a lot of stuff happens in certain shows. Yeah, but still, it was dumb. Yeah. And then magical creatures live in peace with humans in Briarwood, but anyone who visits Briarwood from out of town is going to freak the fuck out. Yep, and then you just have... The repeat of the process all over again. And then you have Udana, Liam, Bo, and Nick just riding off on motorcycles, just on the, on, on the road. So let's ride off into Operation Overdrive. And I'm so over this series. I'm ready to drive away from it. Yeah. Anyway, let's get this operation over with. Uh, Max and Android, he's the son, son of Andrew Hartford, and he was the red made the Red Ranger, and he somehow turns out to be an android. And how none of those characters had, had personalities. They really didn't. I'm not even going to mention them by name. Instead, I'm going to go back to Mystic Force and say the names of those characters. No, Sh- don't, don't. That's, that's spoiling them. Do you really want to compare Overdrive Pink to Vita? No, you're right. Move on. Huh. Now, even though Madison barely had any character development, she was still buried in um, Overdrive Blue. I will take Chip over ro- over Overdrive Yellow any day. Yeah. And is there even a comparison to Ch- for Xander compared to Operation Overdrive Black? Well, there's no comparison to, um, to Daggeron. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and Operation Overdrive, the black guy is the Black Ranger. Yeah. We didn't mention that with Zack in the original because that's been played to death. As well as Trino of Yellow. Yeah. Anyway. And Tommy. There's only one good thing. There's only one good thing about Operation Overdrive. The team-up episode. Which arguably is probably the worst team-up episode. But it had some of the best Rangers, though. It had the best Rangers because they weren't the Operation Overdrive Rangers. Exactly. So in that regard, it's the best fucking team-up ever. Give us a team with those retro Rangers. We got Tori, Xander, Bridge, Adam, and Kira. Yeah, that's a that's a well rounded team. Ironically enough, all <coughs> from the from the Disney era, for, since Ninja Storm, when uh, the Space Rangers in continuity still have their powers, the Lost Galaxy Rangers are capable of pulling their swords from the stone again to revitalize their powers. Uh, Time Force as well, and we also got one of the better um better robot characters back in that one episode. Alpha. Alpha. I hate the voice of Alpha Seven though. I've always Alpha 6 he hated. No, I like Al. No, I hate the first half of Turbo with Alpha going, you, 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 when he gets it changed and in space, that's when I like Alpha 6 again. No, that was Alpha Selvin, dude. No, that wasn't Alpha 7. Hmm. We gotta get, we gotta get these Alphas straightened out. Anyway, go ahead. Original Alpha is best Alpha. Move no, on. he's not. He's oh, oh, you're talking about Alpha 5 or you're talking about Alpha 1? Alpha dude. 5. Alpha 5 will be original Alpha for me. Okay, okay, okay. It was like, ooh. Do you even think I know about Alpha 1? I'll get to you. I'll I'll explain later. Please don't. Anyway, go ahead. No, no. He's completely evil and basically went whole Skynet. We're not to RPM yet. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Great continuity. Okay, uh, what else is there to say about Operation Overdrive? That's about it. It's a thing that happened. It's a globetrotting experiment that really doesn't work, and... What was it? Way to take a dumb of Bokinger, you bastards! Bokinger was infinitely better. Even the theme song was better. Yeah. She actually likes the theme song to Operation Overdrive. All you do is disappoint me. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't sound bad to me. It sounds bad to us. If it helps, I hate the one for Beast Morphers. Does that help? We'll get to Uh, Beast Morphers in this. Anyway, Jungle Fury. Back Back on track. Yeah, (coughs) Animal Spirits. Unite as one. Casey, Lily, Theo. RJ. Dominic. And then the the idea of Daishi and using fear as a weapon, perfect. Mel as his um as his cohort. Oh yes, yeah. And just and it's playing in my head. 
I just love, I love the theme song, I love the characters, I love that they stuck with the three ranger dynamic for more than four episodes. RJ didn't become a ranger until, what, episode 19? And then he got, and then Dominic followed down the line. Yep. And then you got the spirit rangers giving the new powers. Oh yeah, which are another element of an uh, American original ranger. Yep. Shark ranger, elephant ranger, bat, bat ranger. ranger. I'm gonna call him Batman. Might as well be it, right? And I I like the end where they're fighting against all the other resurrected evil animal spirits until the masters come into the picture and put on furry suits of their animal spirits. <laughs> that was dumb. They were all fursonas. <laughs> that was dumb. Oh, man, oh, Power Ranger God. furries. For, I, I jokingly call it Power Ranger's jungle furry. He does. That's because it is. It pretty much is. Oh, God, they're all fursonas. The best thing about Jungle Fury is probably all the martial arts fights. Yeah, which... Fights go downhill. Uh, after- sometimes I, I still need to actually finish watching Jungle Furry because I never actually got through it because it kind of bored me in the beginning. You're calling it Jungle Furry, aren't you? I'm trying not to, <laughs> but if it, uh, it will make me hungry. They worked in a pizzeria, dude. Oh yeah, Jungle yeah. Karma Pizza. But still, the fight scenes go downhill after the next season. Yes. Yeah. The next season is RPM. Get in gear. Yeah. Because they stand together. So apparently. Alpha One went Skynet. Uh, no. <laughs> Here's no. what. <laughs> no, Dr. K actually ac- somehow accidentally made a computer virus. No, she didn't accidentally make one. She made one in order to shut down the system, but she did- but she was stupid enough to not put the failsafe in already. Yeah. And so we end up getting <coughs> a Terminator style robotic apocalypse with the Power Rangers being the last line of defense. Okay. Yep. You think because like, she's both like how so she's so smart. But yet, it was her, just because of one... She, she's, a, she's the dumbest smart person ever met, to ever live. Yeah. yeah. I love Ziggy. Yeah. Ziggy, Dylan, Summer, uh, Flynn, and Scott are some of the best rangers in this. I'm not that fond of Gem and Gemma. We, we don't blame you. It does, didn't they were twins who finished each other's sentences constantly. No, I'm saying, didn't... That one actually stayed the closest to the... No! Didn't? This is complete opposite! Really? And it worked out really well. It was one of the darkest series based That's off one I'm of the most light-hearted Sentai. The little ever. mascot... Really? The little mascot was basically like this white and um, white and pastel pink um, car bumper that looked like a bunny named Bomper. Yeah. And the, uh... You know how these Zords have, like, eyes that shift around and whatnot? <coughs> The Zords were alive in the Sentai, and, and they, they were talked like they talked like cartoon characters. And they and they were all um and they they all had living um living breathing personalities as well as um they actually each traveled to different worlds. There was a monster world, a junkyard world, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, this series is ve- this season in particular is very meta, and I love it. Okay, so whenever I morph, I can't help but notice this giant explosion behind me for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> And they give legit in-continuity explanations <coughs> for it. When they morph, they release a large amount of energy, and it has to be ex- expunged by through some... Through the spandex. Through the spandex. It's, that is not spandex! <laughs> it is a carbon fiber nanofiber! So a spandex. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, let's... So rem- it's just one giant fart joke, then, I guess. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I am not the only one seeing this. And let's not forget the meme that never was. I'm Scottish. Oh, uh, I love that. I love Flynn. Flynn. He How's went brave fun? hard He's on a bunch yellow. of people. In yellow, she's the girl. What about you? I'm Scottish. Well, let's see, what else was there that was, um, that was um, awesome about that? that uh, oh, yeah, the differences um, between RPM and Goanger. Yeah. Green and black. How they're supposed to be like a wolf and a dolphin. I mean, yeah, in um, in Sentai, it's a dolphin and a German Shepherd. It's, it's explicitly a German Shepherd okay. instead of being a shark and a wolf. Okay. Here. Yeah, what was, uh, Scott was a falcon? No, he's a lion. I mean, oh, falcon, yes, it was a falcon racer. Falcon, Flynn was the lion. Yeah. And Summer was, what, a bear? Yeah, bear RV. Bear. Oh, yeah, and apparently, um... Bear. <laughs> yeah, and apparently, uh, falcon and bear actually had a child. 
Uh, ironic because uh, people constantly ship uh, German Shepherd and Bear. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. So uh, apparently they can have kids. So. RPM is oddly one of the best, is arguably one of the best seasons of Power Rangers. Because and of how dark it got? Yeah, how tar- seriously it took it and how many uh, leaps they took, chances they took, and how well it paid off. Oh, here's the biggest one. Tanaya 7. Oh, yeah. Brainwashed. Uh, so- she was blind and she was given new eyes robotically. Mm-hmm. And then brainwashed when she realized the truth and she was almost completely corrupted by uh, Vengex virus. Wow. Think of astronomy, but multiply by, by ten. Damn. Yeah. Now let's go downhill with Samurai. <coughs> I thought you liked Samurai. Samurai is better than Megaforce. That's but not that's saying much. A, that's, that's as far as it goes. That's like saying Megaforce is better than over, Operation Overdrive. <clears throat> but it's not. Sam much. No. I will take Operation Overdrive over Megaforce based off your argument with it. Yeah. But first, Samurai. They adapted way too much from Shin Kenjer. And they didn't go they through too with much all that of it. They fucked it up, or? Yes. Okay. They didn't follow up with enough of it because they these guys, it's like they were trained to be rangers because and how it's, do a, they still it's a have familial the last name, thing. And how do they still have the last name of Sheba if they're both, like, complete white? I don't know. <sighs> but they were basically trained to be rangers because of a familial bloodline, and then they gave up their lives to <clears throat> defend the city from the Nylock. And Jaden is bland as vanilla. Except I still like <clears throat> vanilla. And there are so many dumb jokes in this. And they brought back Bulk. I know, and Skull. Ooh. No, it was Spike. I know, but Skull came back at the end, though. For one episode. Yeah. Still counts. And apparently he's with Kimberly now. <coughs> Interesting. You better be shitting me. I wish I was shitting you. That's the rumor I heard. I didn't say it was a bad thing. It is, though. It is. The only good thing I will say about Samurai is probably Antonio, because I just like his energy. Gold is good to go. All right. He was so shiny. He was a shiny little shit. <laughs> Who could cook a mean fish? Well, yeah. Um, Shin Gold was a sushi. Um, was a sushi cart. Um, um, runner. Oh, nice. Yeah. You ever notice that on the, his on um, his back blade is actually an anchovy? It is. It's totally an anchovy. All right. Now what? This one is probably going to take the most amount of time, which we don't have enough time to go in depth as to why this sucks. We'll probably just do another podcast later for it, or do a video. For we'll, it. So, we'll try someone else as best as much as possible. So All do right. we just leave it at Mega Force sucks and move on? Mega Force sucks. <laughs> Super Mega Force doubly so. Yes. Let's move on. <laughs> Dino Charge. Better than Mega Force. <laughs> yes, it is. That's not saying much. <laughs> No, it was actually good. It had some good characters, another yeah, New Zealander. Know, yeah, but we know Mega Force sucks. Dino Charge is saying that it is much better because Mega Force sucks. Yeah, and until the ending of Dino Charge, where they completely fuck the timeline and establish it's in a different world, just like RPM. Yeah, also another mention of the fact, like I know it's like you know it's basically explaining the timeline, but. If the meteor, if the meteor that never hit the Earth wiping out the dinosaurs, that means there was no dino, there was no dino thunder for downtimes to, to be made. Addition, in addition to that, there was. What are the chances that if dinosaurs still existed, they would have somehow still adapted through time the same and ended up with humans on the still same place? Same reason I still have um still that dinosaurs at the same time as well. Uh, let's not think about but that. But yeah, uh, okay, here's another little mind, mind screw for you. What? If the meteor never hit, we never would have gotten Dino Thunder. And if stuff that those three did, which would most likely, which would definitely has been proven to affect the future, means that SPD wouldn't be the SPD that we all know already. Which most likely, de- in turn, affect Time Force. I think you're making him confused. No, I'm not confused. You're I'm just dizzy with information. I am dizzy right now. Yes, let's just let's just continue. With yeah, that, we'll, that, we'll we'll expand on that sometime. That yeah, Dino Charge has some <coughs> of the, some of the most interesting 
chances that they took because the Blue Ranger is a caveman and the Gold Ranger is a knight. Yep. And that there were ten rangers in this series, which is the most amount of rangers. And one of them was an alien. One of them was an alien. And not a dumb Aquataran alien, just a birdman. A prehistoric birdman. Prehistoric birdman. And the theme song rocks. The theme song is good. I it's love cookie, the theme it's, song. it's still cookie cutter, but it's better than the last two. Yeah, it's definitely better than the last two. I love it. The next theme song is much better. Yes. Because it takes a few more chances of its own. Yep. Ninja Steel. Yeah! Are we moving to Ninja Steel now? That is what's next. All right. It's my favorite. Yeah, it's her favorite. I mean, what else are we going to talk about for, um, for, um, for Dino Charge? Not much. I don't know. Tyler and uh, Shelby's relationship. Or how uh, how uh, Dino Charge Aqua is is, um, is his father. And that the Dino Charge <laughs> gems apparently keep you from aging. Apparently. Mm-hmm. So uh, now Tyler and his dad look like brothers instead of father and son. When the Dino Chems uh, unbond with someone, do you think he was stuck like that, or did he rapidly age to restore his age? The thing is, I don't think it was on the gym that actually made him stop aging, but for the fact that he was still actually stuck in um stuck in Ranger form, which would kept him from aging. No, they said they explicitly say that when the Dino Charge bonds to you, you stop aging. Huh. I don't think it would be that cool just to, like, you know, throw all that age off on him on one time. So he stays that age and ages normally throughout the rest of his life? Or do maybe you think maybe he loses the last ten years of his existence? I think maybe it's just, like, kind of like, like the whole thing with Radio from Final Fantasy IV. How, like, she wound up in the, um, the, the land of summon monsters. And so she basically became adult within just, like, roughly, like, being, like, in there for just a couple of days. But uh, but going you know, out of the zone didn't like, you know change her back and she just start, just kind of just like you know just got accustomed to it. Um, years later, maybe that's what it's like. Maybe on to Ninja Steel, crushing evil with all their might. Together, Ninja Steel. They never give up without a fight. Ninja Steel. Power Rangers fear no danger. Ah, that's one of the best ones. Yeah, and the Gold Ranger is a cowboy. With a burger phone. With a, yeah, burger phone. Yeah. Uh, I, lo- I like this one also because I think it's another unique team color scheme because I don't think we've had one where it's red, blue, yellow, white, and pink. It's either just pink or white. Huh. Red, blue, yellow, white, pink. Yeah, because isn't it, isn't it usually green? No, because because it's usually like pink and white are interchangeable. Yeah, like how black and green are interchangeable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Aside instead from the original, white, no, that's what I'm saying. Instead of white, aside, wouldn't aside from green, the original Mighty usually. Morphin, when the white was an it was an additional member, the core team isn't usually like that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Isn't the one in place of white usually green? Oh, yeah. that's what I was asking. Oh no, no, oh, no, no. Blue is usually interchangeable. No, black is usually interchangeable with green. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, some teams just don't have green altogether. Fair enough. Yeah. <clears throat> but Ninja Steel was a nice return to form, and mm-hmm. people chastise it for it. I don't know why. Neither do I. Because they're assholes. What else? Maybe. I don't know. But it was definitely an interesting concept with the bad guys being in charge of an alien TV station. An alien TV station. Essentially, that's what it is. Yeah. Ah, it's Mojo Vision. Yep. X-Men. Yep, Mojo Vision. <laughs> All right, uh, what else is there to say? Uh, Boom's actor comes back, and he is a great addition. Mick Canick. Mick Canick. Yep. I just got that. Really? No, I got it a while ago, but still, it's a facepalm moment regardless. Yeah. Huh, there were some good fights. Oh, we didn't mention this with Samurai or Megaforce, especially with Megaforce. They polluted the entire series with fight scenes. Hmm. <laughs> Dino Charge was returned to form with fight scenes balanced out with scenes of them just talking and doing stuff together. Yeah. Ninja Steel is the same way, yep. only they're back in high school. Yep. As opposed to people with jobs. Huh. Ninja Steel really is a return to form, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Because up until in space... Actually, technically, 
Mega Force was a term for them because they were in high school. Yeah, but Dino Charge changed that again. Probably for the better. And then Ninja Steel. Is Ninja Steel a step down from Dino Charge? No. No. I think it's actually. I think it's actually still on the same level. But um, since they're in, but they're in school, while well, Dino Charge still had jobs, and so you got, so you get, so you get two good ones of, of on both sides. Oh yeah, uh, I prefer Sledge and Dino Charge over Galvanax and Ninja Steel. And let and we <coughs> we completely skipped over Master Zandrid and whatever the names of the enemies were in Mega Force, probably for good reasons because Samurai and Mega Force's villains suck. Yeah. Super, um, Super Mega Force um, were good in Gokaiger. Yeah, but no, not 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 regularly. No. Yeah, because uh, like I said, once we do the Super Mega Force Mega Force podcast, yeah, I am going to unload, unleash the beast. <sighs> so anyway. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention that ever s- since the Neo Saban Saban era started with. Um, uh, samurai. They started splicing uh, the series into two because apparently there's something going on where you can only have 22 episodes per season. So we have Samurai and Super Samurai, Mega Force and Super Mega Force, Dino Charge and Dino Super Charge, and Ninja Steel and, and Super Ninja, Ninja Steel. Steel. Well, you're never going to get Super Beast Morphers next. <sighs> I hope not. You know who we are. Hey, if we haven't got... No, this is the second half of season one, so maybe we will. I don't know. So is this moving on to Beast Morphers? I don't know. Was there anything else to go about? Oh, 25th anniversary special. Yes. Yes. We're skipping over the 20th anniversary special with Megaforce because that was a disappointment. That was serious was a disappointment. <laughs> Ninja Steel's 25th anniversary is a step up. Much better. Except they constantly hero worship Tommy, which the more you think about that, it gets annoying. But but it's still a good one. Uh, they took elements from the uh, uh, Shattered Grid storyline, because you know for a fact that Dragon is... Draken? Is Draken, yeah. In the comic, it's Lord Draken. In the, in the show, it was Lord Dragon. I'm trying to remember what year... Oh, oh never mind. Shattered Grid came out before Ninja Steel, Super Ninja Steel did. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah. <coughs> but the Rangers, but the fight scene with all those old Rangers was a moment of bliss. Seeing older Rangers f- to go past Ninja Storm. Yay. We got We got Turbo, we got Zeo again, original Mighty Morphin, which we got that in Operation Overdrive, but... Something other than original Mighty Morphin, if you please. Yeah. Yeah, we got in space, turbo. And we also got Zio. Megaforce, but at least we got the good ranger from Megaforce. Yes, I will talk about her through her name. We have Gia. Gia. We got Antonio, TJ, uh, I think. Did, did we have Samurai Green? I don't think we did. No, no, we did not. I don't think so. No, we didn't. We had a uh, <coughs> cat as Turbo. No, we had Ro- Mighty Morphin Rocky, uh, Tommy, and his multiple Ranger forms. Is that when he actually used it and he changed it yeah. to different Rangers? Yeah, yep. he used the Master Morpher. In the extended version, he went from Dino Thunder to Zeo to White Mighty Morphin to Green Dragon Ranger. Oh, you okay. forgot about Red Turbo. He didn't turn into Turbo. He used Turbo oh. Speed, though. Yeah. Oh, I forgot talking about. Uh, I forgot talking about the comic. My bad. Nope. No, but that was a good. That was a good episode there. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Was, um, was TJ blue or red in that special? Game? He was blue. Okay, never mind. Cassie was pink. Uh, not Cassie. Uh, Catherine was pink, though. Because right, that would've been. Oh yeah, there was also Coda and Gem and Gemma. Uh, from RPM and Dino Charge. Respectable. There was a lot of yellow and gold in that one. Yeah. And in, in white. Yeah, there was also, uh, Coda came back twice in Ninja Steel because the actor's brother is legit the brother of, uh, Ninja Steel Blue. Yeah, the Siddhartha's. Yeah. Yoshi Siddhartha and Pierre Siddhartha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Power Rangers runs in the family. Both blues. Yeah. Yay. And then, 
One and then uh, Peter became red and Yoshi became silver green. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, let's not talk about Hyperforce. That's another can, can of worms. worms. Mm-hmm. All right, now quickly going over Beast Morphers. Why did it take? Why did they actually go backwards and use Goat Busters instead of going forward and use Zeoja? That's my thing. I don't know. Because Zeoja were actual beasts and animals. Here's my question. Why did they use a life-changing form of energy, Morphax, that can be used to power all sorts of technology and whatnot, <clears throat> and use it to make an eco-friendly bicycle? Well, bicycles are kind of already eco-friendly. Yeah, but they used Morphax-fueled bicycles to help the environment. How? I don't know. They don't explain that. Beast Morphers are stupid. So far, at least... Apparently, when they added the gold and silver rangers, uh, uh, Neo Billy became the gold ranger, and apparently there was a ro- the robotic body for New Vengex, which I'm not even going to try and remember that guy's name, apparently was fueled with Morphex energy and became the silver stag. It's supposed to be opposite. Silver Stag was the human. Gold was the robot. That's not the case here. Someone's mad. Yeah. And that's about all I know. Remind me to play you the Beast Morph... Um, we got to play her the Beast Morph theme song? We sing? did. She knows. She she enjoys my uh, parody that I do at the end. It's like, go, go, Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers. Power Rangers, you suck ass. And remind me to play you... Go Busters Day. I like the little, like, <coughs> part before the really fast bullshit. For just Take as we fight re- with Beast Morph and Might, together we rise. Yes, that sounds good. Take the rest of this shit out or slow it down. Make it original. That's too hard for them right now. They're owned by Hasbro. Yeah, like I said, remind me to please. No, that makes me want to shoot my... No, I hate it. All right. Well, that's about as much as we can do this time around. We had a little less time than yep. expected, but we got through all of Power Rangers, excluding yeah. the movie yep. from 2017, yeah. which we did our own. We already have that. We already have a video discussing that, and we're still yeah. hyped up on the adrenaline of all it, right. but still. Just one quick little thing. This is for you, Aisara. Okay. Don't play that. Don't play that on the podcast. We'll get a copyright strike. All right, fine. Just, um... Now, Isaris heard the be- the Go Buster theme song. Yes. What'd you think? Infinitely better. Told ya. Yeah, so, I'd say that brings us to a close. Yep. I think we know what I need to do for you next time when we get together. Uh, you play her to my, on the Power Ranger themes, and I'll play the Super Sentai themes for each season. Oh. Sounds good. Sounds like an interesting game to play. Which, by the way, we, we found only one Guess the Power Ranger theme song video on YouTube. She got all but one right. Nice. <clears throat> all 19 of them. Well, she got Zeo confused. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. It's because I'm used to a different part of Zeo. That's why I got mixed up. Yeah. I got them all right, though, because I'm that big of a nerd. Yeah. All right. Now, I think with all that said and done, we ought to wrap this up completely. Yep. So, I am the Guardian. I'm the Professor. I'm Isetta. And it's been morphing time. It has. It's been more phenomenal. It's been more phenomenal. Thanks for watching. Go, go, Guardian! Power of the Professor! I don't have one. Bonton Battle On? That would work very well for her. Yeah. Want to try it again? Okay. Go, go, Guardian! Power of the Professor! Oh. <laughs> God damn it, Lena. Sorry! Bonton Battle oh. On. I gotta figure out a better one for me on the own. It's Power Professor. I know, I gotta find a better one. That sounds kind of stupid now you think about it. No, it doesn't. Not really. If you think that's stupid, then Go Go Guardian sounds ridiculous. No, yours yeah. is actually it sounds dynamic. I guess. All right, final try. Here we go. Yeah. It's been more phenomenal having you guys. So with that said, Go Go Guardian! Power of the Professor! Fun time, battle on! We'll see you next time. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. I hope not. I don't know. Was it loud? Yeah, it should be fine. All right. See ya. Nobody can hear me in this room for some reason, but I can hear everyone else. Bye.